Hi everybody, today we look at gameplay cues and effects and build ourselves a small teleporter with cooldowns. The demo map is checked in, so just check it out, that's the easiest way to repeat the whole thing. Just give a short demonstration here. It will essentially have all the components that we are building and have it available for you in different sections. You see here that goes to assets, it's a teleporter looking down there to the asset section. I run into the teleporter, obviously I'm teleported. And here I am, that will be assets and, and, and things um, that have some copyrights in it. So I will extend that, keep extending it. And when I now go back, now I'm teleported back. And if you look at the, at the top left, you see two teleporters active and a cooldown. So these two teleporters both come from Lyra, mostly from the shooter core and are reused here in the project. And I will show you how to do that. So let's switch to our Infographic, not much more components today, but a couple of things to do. First thing, we want to have this Lyra hut. The hut is just a an, an kind of empty widget that shows how your smaller widgets, how your components are um, on, the, on the screen. And if you see, it's coming from Lyra hut layout. At the moment, we have three components here. We have the two cooldowns and we have some subtitles. And looking at the cooldowns here, um, both are coming from the shooter core and we will have first a look at the ability progress. If you look at the graph of this hut, there's nothing. So normally you don't have any logic in that. It's really just for the configuration, what you see there. And it's always active, meaning you have to switch on and off your components during the gameplay if they should be visible or not. In our case, just during the cooldown, they're visible. How do you register this hut? That's simple. Just look here. It has a connection to your default user experience that you use. That's the user experience that you point the level to. And just opening that, just here in the root, that is here my Lyra experience definition. And you see, I added one component at widgets. The widget is our hut that we just showed. And very important, the layer ID is here, UI layer game. So that means it's always visible in the, visible in the game and it, um, it's on us really to trigger the visibility of components when and how we need them. So first thing that we have to do, we have to have a look how the components themselves, the ability progress here from the shooter core is actually um, shifting its visibility and reacting to events like in this case our teleport with our cooldown. You find them in the shooter core. I copied a copy here into the plugin and just open that. You see it's coming from Lyra Tech Widget and has yeah some small components that are graphic. One is this number and the other thing is the bar around it. And if you look at the graph there are Two interesting things. One extremely important one. On initialize is this listen for duration messages. That's the key component and the core how the whole thing is really working. So it listens for a service bus at the it begins collapse, so invisible. And during its life, it's listening for these duration messages and it's looking for something called ability teleport duration message. It doesn't know where that comes from, but the moment it is triggered, it will actually react. It will become visible. It will do some stuff with the material. It will update the material, but that is really the trigger of it. It's decoupled. It does not know who is sending that message. It just reacts to it. With the message is some payload, especially a payload duration. So it knows oh, I'm supposed to run for seven seconds in our case. The tick itself is updating the component permanently, reading per tick, giving a new value, updating the bar and stuff like that. And only at the very end, when the duration has gone, then it's switched back to invisible. So that was the, the kind of radial um, bar, the cooldown bar, the, 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 the longer bar is actually more or less the same. It has a value showing the percentage and it has that bar. It's coming from the health component. You will see some reference in it. The event tick is kind of complicated because it does a lot of material manipulations here. And, but essentially it's just really looking 
um, after each tick, what's, what's the new duration left, what's the old duration, and then it updates the material and looks at the percentage. You see here some references to the old usage with the health, um, that is just per material parameters, so I leave them as they are, they are just really names. But yeah, it's, it's really running down until the duration here is at zero, and then the visibility is again collapsed, so un invisible for us. The trigger again is this listen for broadcast messages. So the duration message here, same thing. The moment it happens, it will um, get active and be shown. This message bus system is very important because um, one thing it's, it's decoupled from the actually triggering event. The other thing is, of course, now we use the internal one theory. You could put that into, into the web, into AWS Cloud or Azure Cloud and really have an an unlimited scalable message bus that makes it extremely scalable and extremely fast. Now we have to really define the ability that is triggered and that is sending this duration message. So I have here the GA teleport. And one of the very important things here is the class default settings. Two things here, the net execution policy and the net security policy. In our case, we say it's locally predicted and it can be run on client or server. So let's say it's a kind of the client can use it, can trigger it, but we kind of um, have control on the server. Here's a cooldown gameplay ability effect that is also set to a gameplay effect. And having a look at that, this thing has two important settings. One is the duration itself. So it is seven seconds. That is really defining how long our cooldown will be. And then it's also adding a couple of gameplay um, text to it, gameplay teleport immunity. These are again text that I can listen to for messages like add tech to actor, remove tech to actor, and I can um, register to that and react accordingly. Good, this is the gameplay um, cooldown event. The ability itself is triggered by activate ability from event. So we need an event and with that event comes a payload. The payload here are two important things. One is the instigator, one is the target, the instigator being our character and the target being our teleporter. Both things we need later. So we really just have a look if they are valid. Then on the server, we look first, is the teleport interface implemented? Again, we are working against the interface. We don't cast, avoid cast at all costs. We just look at the interface. The interface itself is just is very simple. The one thing I need to transform, so my target teleporter, where is it actually to run into or to teleport to? And the other thing is just getting the name for it. For the name, I don't use a lot of strings. I normally use a couple of enums because they are a bit easier to handle. So just have a look here. Uh, down there, here's enums. And I created this e teleporter that is just a list of my teleporters at the end. So two things in there, home and assets. And of course I will update them accordingly when I need more of them. So that is the interface. And then when we are satisfied, yeah, it's the right interface, we will, we will commit the ability. For demo, I use three commits here. Commit for the cooldown, commit for the cost, commit or the general commit. Normally you just use the general one, but you can react to them accordingly if you want. And if everything is fine, the commit has not failed, then we will really go to what we want to do. We stop all movement. The moment somebody goes into the teleporter, we get the teleport transform. So the target transform, and then we teleport actually to it. And last thing important, we push a message to the client so that the client has the ability to send around the message because that's exactly the message we listen to. It comes with a payload with the rest of the of the um, cooldown duration. And here on the client, you will have this um, broadcast event. Broadcast on the only client, it broadcasts the ability teleport duration message together with the payload, how long it actually lasts. That was exactly what we saw in the cooldowns. It were, they were looking to this ability teleport duration message. Just for reminder, we jump back, going to our widgets again. Uh, let's open here our ability progress, the graph, and uh, not the tick, we go up there. And here again is the listen for duration messages. 
So this principle, something is posting a message, I react to a message, but I actually don't know what was posting it. That's one of the extremely important things. That is one of the whole points of the gameplay ability. So last thing on the client, we have a gameplay effect that is applied. The gameplay effect here is just a gameplay effect on owner. And we have this gameplay effect teleport. Let's look at that one, what it actually does. Gameplay effects normally are graphical components or visual components. One thing, it has to be instant. It cannot have a duration here, otherwise you will not really see your effects. Other thing, it, it's pointing to a couple of gameplay cues. Again, it's very decoupled from the whole thing. It's just um, firing this gameplay cues. And if you look at the references, you will always see yeah, a couple of effects pointing to that game, this gameplay tag, but also um, a couple one or more gameplay queue notifiers for it. Other than that, it has no settings. There's a lot of things that you can do, but we keep it simple here for the moment. And um, yeah, maybe let's let's actually have a look at one of these gameplay queue notifiers to remind us what we actually can do with it. So again, we just select one of them, go to edit here and have a look at the references, for example, for the heel gameplay tag. We search for reference and yeah, here's this GCN, so the gameplay queue notifier character heel. And let's have a look what it does. Let's browse to it and then open it. And here in the gameplay queue, one thing is you have this on burst event playing an audio and you define here the Naya Jera, what is there, the audio, what is there. You can do things like camera shakes, you can define force feedbacks, and they are all available here and are also coupled through this gameplay tag that is fired. Good, let's close that down. Last thing that we have to do, we actually need something to interact with that is firing this event, that is activating this gameplay ability, and that is our teleporter. The teleporter is, um, a simple component really. It sits on the on the map. You will find a map folder here. Uh, let's close that down. So this demo map is something I will continue to develop, showing all the concepts that we that, that we do here. It's under maps, demo room, and the demo room has a couple of blueprint actors here, and one of them is this teleporter. Teleporter itself, yeah, let's go to the viewport first. So kind of simple. It has yeah, a torus, it has some text, that is the text that we will set according to our teleport target. It has um, some Niagara to make it a bit fancy. Here's the text and then it has a collision sphere. And the collision sphere is triggered the moment our characters runs into the teleporter. And naturally it has an event down there that is on begin overlap, here it is. So event is triggered and then again, first thing we do, we set a couple of variables, um, having a look if the actor is valid, if the if we have an ability component system, otherwise we don't have something to fire or something in it. Yeah, it could be a bullet or something entering it, we would ignore that. Then we are creating this, this event data, that is our payload that we sent. So the tag would be ability teleport and very important, we would set an actor and ourselves. So we as the teleporter, then we send the gameplay event to the actor with the ability teleport and that's it more or less. Yeah, some result printing and that is already our whole teleporter firing. The other thing is this begin play is just setting the text and um, that is it. quite important because that is what is tested in the gameplay ability is the interface that we implement here. So have a look at the class settings and you see that we actually implement this I teleport this interface for us. Otherwise we would be ignored by the gameplay ability. Looking at the functions the interface has, we saw these two functions uh, da, 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 down here. No, uh, sorry, here's interface. So two functions, we have the teleport name that is extremely simple because it's set 
for the blueprint the moment I put it into level. And the other thing is get the teleport transform. Again, I just iterate through all actors that actually support this interface that have it implemented. And then I just compare what I find with the my teleport target that is again um, fixed set. And the moment I find something, I just look where is that actor currently. I take the position information from in the location at 100 to have a small jump when I add when I when I when I come to this teleport target, and be done. So that's it already. So I would say we can again try it out and see with the new knowledge if we really understand what it's doing. So. See, I played around a bit with the, with the starter menu. So these were the other websites, the links we did it in the last video. Here's our first teleporter. It goes to assets. I have a couple of effects. I have a kind of explosion. I have a damage effect. I see the teleporters uh, cooldowns both running. Yeah, now they are actually gone. And then I can teleport back. And again, I have my teleporters here. And if I cross it now, the commit um, ability will not fire because the cooldown is still running. So I'm done. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.